Here's the next project. This is a piece of bar which I've. It's a pin. It's worn out basically, so it's decent steel. It's going to be stress proof kind of stuff. And uh, it's pretty hard to centralise. Now it's in the four jaw chuck. It's got a hole in it already. As you can see, it's got a couple of scribe lines through the centre. I've decided I'm going to try and salvage this end bit here, just this little piece of steel here, into what I want it to be. And what I want it to be is... The thing for this, what you're looking at, this is the carriage lock. Let's see if we can zoom out. Yeah, zoom out. So this is the lathe's carriage. That is the locking device, and well, I want a lever. Seems I've got a lathe and a mini machine. A simple lever seems simple. Now I could just, you know, lock it down and measure where it needs to be and all that lock, yeah. But look how many times I've turned the threads now to lock it, and then when I unlock it, I want to turn it out a few threads. Now, I could, quite easily, just have a spanner which I'm using all the time, or I could just make a square spanner key thing for it and have that laying about, but I want a self-contained lever, so I'm making a fancy one. It just got more fancy, so <laughs> here we go. Right, run. That's That's 1,400 RPM. And as you can see, that part is vibrating wildly. sometimes which is a bit annoying so I like to get a bit more of a turn out of it and then it might be chafing on the uh, taper attachment there so I'm getting overly complicated with this now I've drilled the four holes and as we can see there one wasn't quite carling it was a bit too far across. The other thing that happened was I snapped a drill in one of the other holes, and the other hole was that one there. The drill snapped in the other one, and this one here, I think the drill pushed backwards because it didn't go in as far. So I had a couple of problems when I was firing it out. Anyway, I've gone ahead and drilled and tapped it for M4, so I'm going to make an M4 grub screw, which is going to sit below the surface. And I'm going to put a groove in, a four mil groove, all the way around where the group grub screw is. And then I'm going to make a cap, which is going to completely cover it so no chips will go in there at all. Which is going to be around about 900, mil, 900 thousandths wide. So it's a bit over complicating it, but it will never leave the lathe. It will always be on there. So this bit will be grub screwed onto it. that way <laughs> uh, 
and the other bit will be loosely grub screwed into that and tightly grub screwed into that. So this manky looking piece of steel was a uh, pivot pin with a grease hole in it and I thought it was just rust but this side here that's cleaned up was long enough to make the cap for this and this came off the other end of that as well but it ended up that one of the, what looked like a rusty around section I managed to push a screwdriver all the way through the centre of it so that's where the grease fitting would have been for the pin as you can see the pin must have come loose and it got wallowed out quite badly it's one of those floor finds I think you know, oh that's a piece of steel I'll take that on and I will get this out of there so that's what I'm doing now cleaning this end up making it long enough which oh that's just dropping my glasses on the floor so here's my little um, sketch I've made that bit already just got well, nearly finished up just got to put the groove around the centre of it now so that's going to be a 200 thou groove um, I've got to drill a little divot in the thing maybe I, don't, I haven't decided yet I might need to just to get a bit of extra clearance on the extra small grub screw I'm going to make Probably three threads of grub screw with a slot in it for a screwdriver and now I'm onto this section here and all these figures are really weird to follow but I'll be making that out of that now I've got to make a handle put it with a ball end on it and a little 5 mil you know, key with a, a keyed a little grub screw with a keyed end on it I've got to make a grub screw up here which wasn't it isn't 5 mil it's going to be 4 mil now with a pinpoint on it and here we go Put it in gear, lad, put it in gear.
Carter. It's a cap for it. And the piece of steel that I was making out of, well, it had the grease hole all the way through the centre, so I just decided I'm going to, for the time being, put a plastic cap in it. So I made a uh, acetal cap for it, for temporary sort of things, and that fits beautifully onto the... carriage lock area so I've got the collet chuck in roll it in it's got a minute amount of run out in it but all I'm doing is making an inaccurate groove I've got a piece of 5mm high speed steel ground up I've just started that groove off by hand, I'll do it a bit further I think and then I'm going to put a smaller part in tooling because this is going to spin <laughs> Just until I 
that chamfer sounds smooth. Yep. Got that. I'll clean the rest up. Lovely. So you can see it's off centre. The grub screws low. There's a bit of chip in there. Not to worry. It's chipped in there. It goes in. I promise you. It goes all the way down. There we go. So that's going to go on there like that. Then a grub screw is going to hold it onto it. And it will centre up a little bit. Get all the chips out of it. It will drop all the way down. And then the cap will go on. And there's obviously going to be some chips in it. Great. <laughs> Maybe I should debear it, eh? Oh, man. Mm hmm. There's a chip on that. Yeah, there's one there. Now the outside turns on the inside. Yeah? This will have a grub screw which will run in that land, in that groove. So if you try and pull it up, it won't come off. And then to lock it, so, so the handle will have a grub screw on the end of it, basically, um, a land on the bottom of it. When you screw the handle in, it will, it will lock into the top piece, but it won't go so far as in to lock into the side of the land, but it will ride in between the land. So if you try and lift it up by the handle, it just won't come off. And then there'll be a separate grub screw in it. A little butterfly lock on it or something like that which you can lock it up um, and then eventually you might make a brass cap for it but I might remake this in brass the whole thing uh, I haven't decided yet I need to do proof of concept with some cheap free metals I'm getting there so next Got to drill two holes in this. They've both got to line up with that land. And this is no approximation, they've got to go into that land and be perfect. So, got some measuring to do. I might get the depth mic out and do some complex calculations. <laughs> Right, I am ready to thread. Just need to know 
how deep to cut. This is a metric thread. Metric. Six millimeter pitch. Cord diameter. Blah blah blah. Pitch one. Depth of cut. This is going to be a metric, surely. All dimensions in millimetres. 0.615 millimetres. Okay, millimetres. Uh, turn that off. Millimetres. Point. Oh, we've got 6.15. We'll be able to do that, won't we? About there. So 24.2 fail. Let's say 25 fail. Okay, 25 fail is the depth of cut. I think I'm all ready to go. Just gonna make sure the layers run in the right run in the right way, I should imagine. Get a clearance, run. We're still taking bits of material off, so that's all the same setting. Still taking material off, but it flies down there now. Yeah, it does. Oh, nearly. No, it's getting there. I think we still need to take a bit more off. It's sort of getting on, but not going all the way on. Yeah, it's on. I'm crapping the threads. Still prefer it to be a little bit better than that. So I can do another spring pass on it. If it takes any more off. Another spring pass. Yeah, touch your wheel. Oh, it's still taking stuff off. I'm just going to keep on going until it stops taking stuff off, to be fair. Stop. 
<laughs> that was really nerve-wracking. Deary me. Do that again. Lost concentration for a second. About had a uh, heart palpitation then. And, uh, same setting again. Bit reverse. Touch of oil. If I keep on dropping that brush, I will keep on getting annoyed. Why oh, to just go in the pot and stay in the pot? Ooh. Oh man, your rag's covered, not to worry, here we go, reverse, same setting, that's better, nothing came off that time, okay, nothing came off that time. Just keep on going until nothing comes off. That's beautiful. Wonderful. Very tight threads. Very tight indeed. All the way down. So first port of call is clean this face back up again. So I'll clean up the face and I've turned that last section down below the height of the threads ever so slightly. I like to lock up onto that bit but that'll do. Now before I move the part, because I'm going to be turning this, this is the handle here, this is the grub screw at the end, this, this last bit at the end here and then these threads here or to thread in to the DGM flop and I need a little four mil, five mil thing on it as well. So, so there is the lever. It is done. When the camera overheated and it went flat, that was it. So it's not quite carving, but I'll lock it up there. And we've still got movement. It's it's tight, but it's not mega tight. Any tighter than that, it slips. Now it slipped. So not that good. Everything else works as planned. He says confidently. What's happened? What's the idea? Just needs executing better. <laughs> I think if this lever was longer, I haven't rub screwed it on yet. If that lever was longer, and well, let's face it, the lever looks a little bit like a, a cock. 
it's not quite straight neither. <laughs> it's got a got a list to the left hand side, but it is a lever. <laughs> it's quite a, quite amusing the lever is. Right, solid brass. And I turned it out a piece of 16mm stock and then milled it and then filed it. So that's all good. I timed it so it's not quite to the top. So when it wears, the idea was when it wears it, it's got plenty of room to wear around the other side. But I did, well, I did put slide wear oil inside it. Maybe I might want to, might want to change the oil I've put inside it. I made a little spacing ring to time the threads on that so it doesn't lock up on that. It's just a soft jaw for out, nothing to worry about. And the collar in the centre with the nearly square bit in it. Then I Took the black Delron cap off, turned a piece of brass to a 50 thou slug with 24 UNF threads on it, screwed it in and then left turned the top end down to tighten it in there. I'm a bit, a bit disappointed it didn't work out brilliantly. But, there we go. You hear that? That's tight, the handle's tight, but still just a little bit of play in that, so that's free to move around. Well, the handle's nice and tight. But, there's not enough leverage on the little brass lever but there is plenty of material there that isn't lined up is it? I don't think that's lined up properly oh, it's a bit fiddly to put together Get it? No. There we go, got it. So when you get it, it goes up right like that. It takes some fiddling to get it exactly into the land. But once it's in the land, there we go. So because there's plenty of material on the on the penis shaped lever, what I think I'm gonna do possibly is Mill the shank off. <laughs> That's painful. Mill the shank off, put a flat on it, drill and tap it and put a longer lever on it. Then I can really put some leverage on it and lock it in because it just isn't quite long enough. It's 16 millimetres. Oh, yeah, you have seen that turning off centre. Pretty the, the battery was went flat, and then I had to reset the phone, take the battery out, and everything. And like my hands were covered in oil. So anyway, there'll be another modification on that. I should imagine just to get that working better. I haven't measured the clearance in there. There's not a lot of clearance. A little brass bush at the bottom. If and when it works better with a longer lever. Then I'll put the 4mm grub screw in and attach it permanently. But for now it works. Ish. It's good enough for uh, parting and stuff like that. It's not good enough to hold the lathe. But there we go. So next project. You might recognise this. This is a fixture I used when I was making the solar panel mountings. And this was to tie the two bits together so I could uh, mill two at the same time basically. I thought well you know 
I want a travel dial carriage stop. You know, one of those things that you clip onto your bedway, but my lathe is so small it's inconvenient to put something onto your bedways. Really inconvenient. Plus my lathe already has a stop system. It has a third rail. Let me just show you. So this is the Holbrook's bedways, carriage and everything. This is the little gold ring I made. It's really handy for putting a magnet stand on. And clocking stuff in and doing loads of stuff. But besides the point. This is the carriage stop system so you, you slide these to wherever you want and then you lock them up and then what you do is you measure something put your stop where you want it and then this little dial here is a little plunger which runs on this rod and this has got uh, one thousandth per division increments on it and it's really accurate so if you want to if you want to extend your facing cut by two thou you just dial two thou in on that cut to your start and then you'll face off two thousand bang on absolutely every single time it's brilliant but it's not a travel dial so take this clamp off i think anyway sure there's going to be Two holes drilled and then the counterboard for socket head cap screws four mils that'll be five mil deep six mil wide or something like that five and a half mil wide and then clearance down to halfway and then drilled and tapped at the bottom half so basically I'll go through the tapping drill all the way and I'll go halfway through with the clearance drill then I'll go in 5mm with the appropriate um, flat bottom drill then I'll tap the holes, two holes there then this hole here which is already drilled and tapped for doing the fixtures with I will drill that halfway through for clearance on the M8 which it is there then I will slit it down to about where my thumb is, straight down there, split it open. Then I will slit it up to it so I'll have a piece missing out of it. Then I shall make some sort of brass shim washer flexure arrangement here on these two M4s. Bolt it back together on the M4s and then make an M8 lever a bit like this so I can dismantle it, put it round, get it on and just lock it like that. Then the other two holes. Two holes. This is another piece of stainless steel which I used for fixturing up and doing the solar sort of panel mounts. So I think I can use that in there. that plan we'll turn it over and we'll do the clearance from the bottom for that one there because otherwise I'm going to be on the spot. 